Today I'm going to be designing and creating a fantasy hairpiece for drag star Trinity to Tuck Taylor. Once it's completed, I'm going to deliver it to her for a photo shoot. In my wigs, nothing is off limits. I've used chicken wire, Mod Podge, Gorilla Glue, floor shellac. I did one for RuPaul, probably about like a foot tall. First, we're going to start off attaching the frontal to the cap, which is lace from ear to ear. And now we're going to stitch it down. We're going to remove the excess lace because we want to make sure this lays clean around her ears and stitch in the hair for the back. I'm doing a loop stitch. So we're going to remove some of this hair. Growing up, it wasn't really looked at as a legit career, I would say, in my family. I remember the quote, boys don't do hair. I feel like in my parents' eyes, they like wanted like this athlete, something like that kind of stature, and it just swung me. You know, my mom was like, if you're gay, you get AIDS and you go to hell. That's just the misconception that I think a lot of people had back then. So I felt like I kind of had to compensate by doing extra masculine things like military high school, going into the military. That would show my parents that gay doesn't really have a face. All right, don't judge the process. I like steaming my wig in the pot because I want to make sure that each curl gets penetrated evenly with the steam. After my obligation with the Army, I just didn't feel fulfilled. I felt like I was doing what my parents wanted. I decided to follow my passion. I enrolled in the cosmetology school, but it didn't seem promising to my parents, so they weren't very supportive of it because they didn't look at that as a legit career, or something you can retire from or make a good living from. And now we're gonna attach the hair for the rest of it. Gelling this into a nice smooth ponytail. All slick and sprayed. So right now I'm just zip tie securing this ponytail. All of this is extra, so we're just gonna remove this. And now we're going to go attach our money gun. Soldering iron to remove the handle. I felt that I had to not just be your behind the chair stylist, but I had to like take it to the next level, some type of world renowned. Like even if you don't know who I am, you've seen my work. That's what I like about fantasy hair is there's kind of like no rules and there's no like right and wrong. As long as it works, that's all that matter. A little Gorilla Glue to adhere my cotton. And I'm going to secure it all in place now with a layer of felt. Fantasy hair would be something that you would never wear for an everyday event. It's just a work of art that's actually on someone's head. It doesn't even have to be super crazy because everybody's fantasies are different. A straight jet black wig, and you know, to you and me that might be basic, but that could be someone's fantasy. I didn't quite figure out what I was gonna do until last night. I mean, I had a concept, but I'm like, how do I pull it off though? I was on the phone with my mom and a commercial came on TV that I had done the hair for. Got her to change it to the channel. You know, I think that was kind of an eye-opening moment for her. I think she realized this was my passion. To be where I'm at now and have my parents' full support and all of that is amazing. I'm gonna start adding the decor and hiding our electrical cord. We have some gold bowls, diamonds, gold trimming, pearl accents, and then of course, $100 bills. 
Time to deliver this piece to Trinity for her photo shoot. This is amazing. Oh, I love it. It really looks like real money. So this wig is giving us a very like Marie Antoinette kind of Elizabethan mix. Ever since I can remember, I've always been fascinated by hair. I was obsessed with a mop. <laughs> what do you mean a mop? Or all the strands being the same level. Well, when this mop is turned upside down, it gets layers and it's not straight across anymore. So I played around with it and pretended it was hair. <laughs> 